everybody, welcome back to the podcast and welcome back, Snappy Jays. It's time for some snap judgments because Ohio State has made some news. That is Berm. I am Austin Ward, and Ohio State has officially named Brian Hartline as the next offensive coordinator. Uh, what uh, what we lack in a actual press conference to unveil this, um, Ohio State tried to make up for with the release, but it also leaves out some details that I think we'll probably have to discuss moving forward. But uh, a rapid rise in this profession now includes another new title, and I believe a lot more responsibility for Brian Hartline. Berm, what were your initial snap judgments to this move? I mean, the initial first thought, the initial first group, the uh, the initial thought, which is also the first thought, of course, because yeah. that's redundant, the Department of Redundancy Department, um, is that it, it's a clear sign that Brian Hartline's aspirations have changed a little bit uh, in his short time at Ohio State when he when he took, took over for Zach Smith in the uh, 20 summer of 2018, 2019, sorry, um, it really felt like 2018. Gosh, it was 2018. Things yeah, are so been- long. Things are so yeah. long ago. He seemed like a guy that was going to be fairly content being a lifetime position coach at his alma mater, the school that he grew up loving and wanting to play for and getting a chance to coach for. But I think that what you've seen is just the perfect combination of a guy who has been so effective and so good at his job that it's almost impossible for Ohio State to not attempt to help him grow in in the profession if that's what he feels uh, he wants to do. I think it sets him up in a clear way to be the successor to Ryan Day potentially down the road. And uh, I, I think it's an important step for Brian Hartline. And it's risky for Ohio State in a number of ways, but it's also sort of one of those things that I, I, you just kind of have to do. Yeah. It, so when Brian Hartline got into coaching, it was sort of begrudgingly, wasn't sure really if that was for him. And he made uh, piles of money in the NFL. He wasn't going to have to work again if he didn't really want to. And if he did work, he wasn't sure if that was the kind that he uh, was going to enjoy the most. But lo and behold, not only does he like it, he's also quite good at it. And Ohio State's wide receivers have been the best unit in the country under him every single year that he's been in charge. The recruiting has been phenomenal, as Berm can attest and does attest routinely with what he stacked one after the other. The pipeline is not slowing down. So the part that is missing, and when the conversation has been, well, could Brian Hartline one day be the heir apparent? Could he be a head coach? Well, said, well he's never called plays before. Now, that's a pretty big uh, part of the job, potentially. You need to prove yourself by doing that. Maybe you won't call plays as a head coach, but it is one one facet of proving that you can handle more responsibilities. You grow and, go, and climb that ladder. And now it uh, sure appears that that's going to be the case. There's no other uh, reason the... Ohio State release did not specify that, but Berm and I have both been reporting uh, for a long time that Ryan Day anticipated this moment was coming where he had to become more of a CEO and would give up uh, play calling responsibilities. That was indicated again to me in the lead up to the Peach Bowl. It was also shared uh, in a conversation, a production meeting with Kirk Herbstreet and ESPN that I'm not sure that Ryan Day expected to be uh, announced in a public forum at that juncture. At any rate, that's what we expect will happen. And if Ohio State didn't want him to have that opportunity at his alma mater, there were going to be other places that would allow him to do so. So needs um, to allocate some of that money that Kevin Wilson had, some of that responsibility that Ryan Day has shared and and Kevin Wilson was involved with, but not calling plays primarily, um, and allowing Brian Hartline to continue to take another step while knowing that Ryan Day is still around as a very key asset who will also have his hand still heavily involved in game planning and bucket management, which is the way Ohio State puts together its play call. Yeah, I mean, Tim Beck and Ed Warner were the offensive coordinators for Ohio State in 2015, but when push came to shove, it was Urban Meyer who called plays when it mattered the most, and it'll be interesting to see exactly how much Ryan Day trusts Brian Hartline in this role. Ohio State has a difficult schedule in the 2023 slate. It's an opportunity for Brian Hartline to quickly prove himself in that role. But it's also a chance for Brian to show that his football acumen goes well beyond just developing relationships with recruits because the the fact is he was a wide receiver in the NFL, and and we think about wide receiver as sort of a diva position. It doesn't oftentimes get put into the the bucket, I guess, of of the the most like intellectual uh, positions um, because sometimes it's pretty simple, run fast, catch ball. Um, (laughs) But, you know, the reality is for, for Brian Hartline, We've seen in this season alone, this season just ended, Ryan Day was oftentimes 
collaborating with Hartline on the sideline during games and, and trying to get his feedback on certain things. Um, how much that translates in the future, I guess, remains to be seen. But, you know, Jim Harbaugh made one of his biggest moves in the last couple of years was finally letting someone else call plays. And we've seen how much that benefited Michigan. Now, that's because Jim Harbaugh was calling plays from 1920. But Ryan Day's input will certainly be valuable. And it's it's still going to be Ryan, Ryan Day's playbook that Brian Hartline will be uh, taking over from. It is interesting just to think about how this simulates or sets up simulates. I don't know where that word's coming from. I'm having a long day. Where these where the roles come in because Tony Alfred is still the run game coordinator. Uh, Justin Fry came to Ohio State, I believe, with pretty much a thought that when the offensive coordinator position opened up, it was going to be his. Uh, I wonder how that's going to be perceived, how much input he'll have. And at some point, I wonder if it leads to too many chefs in the kitchen, but that's a, a concern for another day. I suppose. Yeah, I would say that it's more than just a belief that Justin Fry thought that when he came over uh, from UCLA to Ohio State, I, that was the expectation. And really, until the last uh, week or so, that was what I still thought would be the plan for Ohio State moving forward and that Justin Fry would uh, head up to the booth, uh, get a chance to also grow his wings after you know working with both Ryan Day and Chip Kelly, that Mike Solini could take over a lot of the on-the-field uh, coaching role with the offensive line and things would be different, but there's been uh, a shift there. And again, with without Ryan Day speaking about it publicly beyond a statement, it's hard for us to know exactly what that is and you know how everybody is on board because it may make more sense to let Justin Fry stay on the sideline. It may not be an issue whatsoever with Tony Alford uh, being paid comfortably to be the running backs coach and having that run game coordinator role. Um, uh, certainly what we talked about last year is important to come back, which is that in terms of staff alignment, I thought it was the best it had been in several years. There was no friction. The offense was working hand in hand. The new defensive group, uh, for the most part, uh, not entirely, was was on the same page and working towards a common goal. Uh, but, you know, we've seen this before, and you mentioned the Warner and Beckier and, and Urban Meyer, where things are not copacetic in there, and you can see – fracture in the offense I didn't feel like that really happened other than the fact that we said after, on November 26th it doesn't seem like Ryan Day is in his play calling bag anymore and maybe he needs to give that up and it was starting to show and I would say that in, in a moment of self-reflection and evaluation you have to give Day credit that because out of every move that he could make firing himself would be the hardest one that does seem to be what Ryan Day did, though. And uh, I think it's interesting because if you look at what could happen at Ohio State, number one, I'm, I wonder if Justin Fry's tenure at Ohio State will be short enough that it doesn't really require him to move into the offensive coordinator position anyway. There has obviously been scuttlebutt already this offseason about if Indiana were to make a move that he could be their guy. I wonder if that plays into it a little bit. I wonder if the fact that uh, Justin Fry's uh, impact on the sideline next year with a very new offensive line would be greater than Brian Hartline's impact on the offensive line with a very experienced wide receiver group. I wonder if it means Devin Jordan gets more of a role in, on the field during game days. I wonder if it means Devin Jordan takes more of a role recruiting uh, wide receivers for Ohio State and if Hartline is really just the guy identifying them and then Jordan takes over because being the offensive coordinator requires a lot more of your time and effort than being a receivers coach who is also the kick-ass wide receiver recruiter. So how does this all play into these, you know, decision is interesting. I think ultimately it comes down to Ryan Dave realizing that if he wants to have Brian Hartline on his staff for the next three years, four years, however much longer Ryan Day is comfortable and living and loving the dream of coaching at Ohio State, that you don't want to let this guy get away and go, you know, uh, grow his, cut his teeth somewhere else. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, there was, we got this question, I don't know, a million times at OhioState.Rivals.com. You know, how is Ryan Day going to do this? If, if he does what we're saying and he's going to give up play calling, does he need to go get a veteran offensive coordinator, someone who has called plays before? Um, <laughs> I mean, he sort of did that with Mike Yersich, and it didn't work out. They were not – they didn't see eye to eye. He wasn't coaching quarterbacks the same way. They had some different philosophies. And, and I know that a lot of times I say it's good in this profession to challenge yourself by getting outside voices and fresh blood. You have to reinvent yourself. What – and to – that would be definitely true if Ohio State was struggling and not one of the top five offenses and highest scoring, most prolific attacks in the country every year. 
and continuing to be a hotbed for quarterbacks and wide receivers and and running backs who want to stick in the program uh, for an extra year with you know guys like Mayan Williams coming back. Like the offense is not broken. So again, I, I do think that the part that they most had to improve was getting back into that creativity of the play calling. They have more than enough skill in that room to cultivate and grow and and build a playbook that is pretty much unstoppable, right? Like we've seen all that. And Ryan Day did that again in the last 10 days before the Peach Bowl. He didn't have other responsibilities. And what did he do? He dialed up an absolute masterpiece. They came up one play short, but it was a reminder of what that offense can do and what he can do when he is, you know, free and able to do the things that he's always done throughout his career. But he's not going to have that from September 1st through the end of November or the first week in December. The yeah, responsibilities and- that are on his plate are immense. And and he, what did he say, Berm? 80% of his time he felt like was devoted to things that were not related to coaching football. Yeah, and, and it's, as I said, there is a huge risk in play here. A number one for Ryan Day because – this next season is pivotal for him, and we've talked about it a little bit. That drum beat will get very, very loud if Ohio State doesn't beat Michigan next November. But there's also a risk for Brian Hartline, who is, again, one of the, the biggest rising stars in the game. If he goes out as an offensive coordinator and doesn't live up to the expectation, what we saw what happened with Kerry Combs. I mean, th- that, that career that had been sparkling, instantly short-circuited and people immediately changed their tune about what his value was to the program and that is a risk for Brian Hartline he's a young guy obviously he's got a lot of time to develop into this role but for Ohio State if if Ryan Day somehow loses to Michigan again next year and loses his job Brian Hartline is not going to be the successor to Ryan Day so it, it's yeah. it is a it is a risky proposition on both sides but I think ultimately it comes down to the fact that Brian Hartline has earned the opportunity to showcase what he can do and that it also illustrates how much Ryan Day trusts him and and because Ryan Day is trusting him with his future as well. Yep, so Brian Hartline is now the offensive coordinator for Ohio State. The rest of that staff, I mean, Keenan Bailey, as we've already talked about, sliding in to take uh, over the tight ends for Ohio State, but all those people were already in the program and leading one of the best offenses uh, in the country and one that uh, did just about everything it could to help Ohio State potentially win a national championship before falling short in the Peach Bowl. Uh, hopefully we'll have uh, more insight from inside the program on that in the coming days ahead. Uh, but as it is, we'll work off of that for now. We know that Brian Hartline is the offensive coordinator and we expect that Ryan Day will be giving over play calling to him moving forward. Uh, when we get more, we'll give it to you as always on the podcast at OhioState.Rivals.com. He's Berm. I'm Austin. We'll talk to you later.